At this point, uh, we've established that when the network done on an object is positive, then the speed of the object increases. And if the network done on an object is negative, then it slows down. So uh, this is useful, but we would like a more quantitative explanation of how doing work affects the speed of an object. The uh, network done on an object is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the object. The kinetic energy of an object is proportional to the square of the velocity. So if the speed of an object doubles, then the kinetic energy increases by 2 squared, and it is 4 times larger. Notice that because the velocity is squared, the kinetic energy is always a positive number. It uh, doesn't make any sense for something to be traveling uh, more slowly than zero. Also, the uh, direction does not matter. Uh, kinetic energy is a scalar, so if a car is going 50 miles per hour to the east and uh, 50 miles per hour to the north, the kinetic energy in both of those cases is exactly the same. The formula for kinetic energy is that the kinetic energy is equal to one-half times the mass of the object in kilograms times the square of the velocity in meters per second. If the object starts at rest and we do work to it, then the work is equal to the kinetic energy of the object, and we can then solve for the velocity if we know the mass. If the object is already moving, then the work done is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. So you would find the initial kinetic energy uh, using the formula for 1 half mv squared, you would add the work and to get the uh, new kinetic energy. Let's do a quick example of uh, solving the kinetic energy. So a toy car with a mass of 5 kilograms is accelerated from rest uh, by 4 meters per second squared for 3 seconds. So what's the kinetic energy of the toy car? Well first we want to find the velocity. The initial velocity is uh, 0, so and the uh, toy is accelerated by uh, 4 meters per second squared for 3 seconds, so we mu f multiply the acceleration by time to get the velocity, which g gives us 4 times 3, so it's 12 meters per second. To get the kinetic energy, uh, we use our formula for the kinetic energy, a 1 half m squared. To get the unit rights, we need to use kilograms and meters per second. So uh, we plug in uh, 1 half times uh, 5 kilograms times 12 meters per second squared, and uh, this gives us a kinetic energy of 360 joules. So if we know the velocity and the mass, uh, we then know the kinetic energy. All right, let's do a second example. And now we're going to drop our toy car from a height of five meters. So the mass is five kilograms. We would like to find the kinetic energy and the velocity. So uh, the initial velocity for our uh, toy is zero. So the kinetic energy will be equal to the work done by gravity. The work done by gravity is pretty straightforward to, to find. The gravitational force is uh, easy to find. It's the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration, and the force is always uh, pointing straight down. Therefore, the uh, work is equal to the uh, force times uh, displacement, and uh, that's going to be the uh, force is going to be 5 kilograms times the 10 meters per second squared, and the displacement here uh, is uh, 5 meters. So uh, we multiply that together and we find that the uh, change in kinetic energy is 250 uh, joules. Now that we know the kinetic energy is 250 joules, so we can then set that equal to the uh, uh, 1 half mv squared. Doing a little algebra, uh, we can then solve for velocity. First we multiply by 2 to get rid of the 1 half term, then we divide by the mass, and uh, we do that, and uh, uh, that value is equal to velocity squared. So we take the square root and find that the velocity is 10 meters per second. Hopefully you see from this that finding the change in kinetic energy using work is sometimes much easier than calculating it using the kinematic equations. We saw from the uh, previous problem that work done by gravity is always e easy to find because the gravitational force, the weight force, is always pointing straight down and the work done by gravity only depends on the height. That means that uh, the only force acting on an object is gravity, then we can use the work done by gravity to find the change in kinetic energy. Put another way, we can define a new form of energy, the gravitational potential energy, that is equal to the negative of the work that can be done by gravity. For the gravitational potential energy, we will use the symbol U sub G, and it will correspond to the amount of kinetic energy that you would potentially get if you release the object from that height. This works because gravity is what is called a conservative force. That means the force depends only on the position of the object, or that if you know the position, you know the force. 
So uh, gravity and electrostatic forces are good examples of uh, conservative forces. Uh, friction or air resistance are examples of non-conservative forces. So notice uh, that if gravity is the only force acting on an object, then the gravitational potential energy increases, and then the uh, kinetic energy decreases. And while if the kinetic energy increases, then the uh, gravitational potential energy must decrease.